Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of It's GSXR O'Clock. Just before we get going, if there's any loud noises in the background, I do apologise. It's not boy racers we have this week, we have Land Rover owners. So the powers above said I don't look that corporate and I should probably have a classic motorbikes.net t-shirt. So bear with me. So at short notice, this is the best we can do. So this week, we're gonna sort the leaky fork seal out. Last week we took the bike apart, this week we need to fix this. So to do that, we need a few parts and tools. So one thing we need is fork oil. I've got to say a massive thanks to Mike at Mad for Bikes for sending us some bits and bobs over. He sent us this lovely putylene fork oil over, which will come in rather handy today. We need a fork seal driver tool which I've had for many years and I've probably done 50 plus fork seals with, does come in rather handy. We've got a big flat headed screwdriver, a small flat headed screwdriver, a 22 mil spanner for the top of the fork, a 10 mil Allen key, which is gonna be attached to our three apes ratchet. And last but not least, we have a brand new genuine fork seal from Suzuki Vintage Parts. So Tim, thank you very much for sending this out. With certain parts on a bike, I don't think you can beat genuine, and fork seals is one of those, so glad to have a genuine one. Thank you very much, Tim. So we've put all the parts to one side, well, we've just got what we need now. We need the fork, and we need this 10 mil Allen key. We're gonna put it on the ratchet. Now, up the end of the fork here is a bolt that holds the whole fork together. Now, it's best to undo this at the start of the fork rebuild, otherwise it can be very, very hard to undo. So, fingers crossed, we can get this cracked off. So, I'm gonna need Bill to give me a quick hand just to hold the fork. So, come in Bill. Hi Bill. Hi Arian. So, if you could just hold the fork for us. Might move it down there. Put that in there. Make sure it's on undo. Get this right in here. And then, we'll see if we can crack this off. Right, let's try it. One, two, three. Okay, so that's not gonna work. It's done up way too tight. And unfortunately, I don't have a vise on my tool trolley. So I'm gonna use another approach, what people call a buzz gun, and that should crack the Loctite that's keeping it done up securely. So here we have the big buzz gun. It's connected to an air compressor, we've got hardened in the corner. So I'm gonna get Bill to come and give me a hand again, and fingers crossed, this cracks the thread lock and gets it undone. So let's see how we get on. Now one thing I would say to you is I wouldn't recommend using one of these with these bits. They're not hard and they're not designed to be used with an impactor but yeah, I'm a naughty boy. But do as I say, not as I do. Okay so we've cracked the bottom bolt off. Now what I'm going to do is undo the top. Now you might remember when I stripped the bike down, I actually loosened this off while it was still in the yolks and it just makes life easier. So we'll undo this and you have to be careful right at the top because there's a bit of spring pressure there. 
and then we can drain the oil out. We will get there. Okay, like I said, there is quite a bit of pressure. Wasn't quite expecting that. So we've got the fork top, we'll put that down. We also have a shim, which goes underneath the fork cap or on the top of that spacer. Then we have the spacer. Then we have another one that goes on top of the spring. And then we have the spring, which is gonna be covered in oil. So I'm gonna leave that in my tub where I'm gonna empty the oil in because like I say, it is covered in oil. So Now the oil I pour out of this is actually gonna look really fresh because about 10 years ago, I did the fork seal, it sat there for years and it started leaking again. So the oil out of here should look almost brand new. Yeah, not bad, you can tell. It got used a couple of times. So what we have to do is slide the fork out, push it in. A few times just to make sure we get all the oil out. Now it can take a while for the oil to drain out, so we'll come back to you in just a minute. Okay, so I let the fork drain overnight just to make life a bit easier. Now what I need to do is strip the fork apart. I've removed the massive bolt from underneath that we undid yesterday with the impactor, and there's also the copper washer in there as well. So what I need to do now is turn the fork upside down and get the damper cartridge out. There we go, everything's still covered in oil. There we go, that's that bit. I've got the little spring and bits and bobs. And if you can see in there, there's actually a shape for the proper Suzuki tool to undo it, but unfortunately we don't have one of those. Right everything is out of there so what i'm going to do is pop the dust seal up very very gently with a flat headed screwdriver he says there we go that one is off now what i'm also going to do before i slide this out is I'm going to take a little clip out just here there we go and that way it might even take the fork seal out Got a little washer as well. Take that out. And now we've got the fork seal down there. So, fingers crossed this comes apart. So in theory, I should just have to slide it a few times and it should come apart. So wish me luck. She's coming and it's bringing the seal, which is what I hoped. There we go. You never can seem to get all the oil out of these things, even though I've left it drain overnight, but that is the fork apart. Okay, right, let's see what else is in the bottom, because there's something left in there. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. That piece actually goes just there, like that. And then we've got a couple of shims as well. And that's everything. So I'm gonna clean this all up because everything's still covered in oil. And then we can start assembling the fork. <laughs> Now I've took everything apart. I've inspected the bushes, they all look okay. 
it's time to put it back together. So I'm actually going to use uh, a broom handle to help me do this because what I want to do is keep the damper cartridge out like this. Now, while I've been editing the video, I've noticed I've made a mistake. Up there on the damper rod, as you can see on the screen now, I've just put a circle around it. I've put that in the wrong way with the little washers, the little shims. Uh, they really need to be in the right way. So I've actually got to take the whole fork apart, take all the oil out, take it everything apart to put it right. So I just thought I'd let you know in case you're following along and copying what I do, I have got it wrong. So that little piece there with the washers needs swapping around 180 degrees and putting back on. So I know what I'll be doing tomorrow. What I want to do is keep the damper cartridge out like this while I put the bottom half of the fork leg on but as soon as you let go it slides down so what can I do something a bit different and we'll use this like that there we go and that holds that up now you see so in theory we should Pop that over there like that. And then if I look down the end, there we go. We've got the thread, so we'll put that massive bolt in with a copper washer. Like that. Big old 10 mil Allen key. And then we can do it up. That's about as tight as I'll be able to do it by hand and then when the forks assembled back together and there's loads of pressure there I'll be able to do it up with a torque wrench so the next part to put in is the top bush so we'll slide that down very gently and then there's a washer that goes on top of it so we'll put that one down as well now with this what you actually have to do is use the fork tool to knock that in so we'll get that out and use that for the first time so got the fork tool take the tire rack off so we'll just sort of slide that over the top like that What I might do is adjust these little blocks because they're not very even. Okay, now they're adjusted. We will use the slide part. So, you put that over there like that. And then, move those a bit. And there we go. That bottom bush is in and now the fork moves nice and smoothly so now it's time for our genuine fork seal looking forward to putting this on if I can get into the packet so there we have it just to make life easier with this I'm going to use a tiny bit of oil just to use as lube just to put it down on there just so we don't tear it or break it because that's the last thing we want to happen to our brand new fork seal okay so i've oiled that up now it's time to put the seal on I need to be really careful and really gentle with this bit so lots of concentrating okay. there we go and that's slotted in there nice and evenly so it's time to put the fork tool on it. Hit a 
think. She's almost there. What I'm gonna use is this washer that was on top last time, just to help drive it down that last little bit. got to watch your hands using that now the fork seals in with its washer it's time to put the little springy clip back in I'm gonna give it a clean up because it's a little bit manky so slide it over the top I'll put like the back piece in first put the two side bits in and then I'll use that little flathead screwdriver just to locate it, pop it into place. There we go, all sorted. So, last bit, again, I'll give it a wipe because it's covered in oil where it thought was leaking, is the dust seal. So, again, pop that over the top, put it down, and she's in place. Now, it's time to put some oil in it. Now it's time to fill the fork up with oil. So I need 456 millilitres of this putylene oil. If I can get the top off. Oh, hurt me fingers. So I'm going to use this to measure how much I need. Uh, I haven't borrowed this out the kitchen, I promise. So certainly looks better than the oil that came out of it. There we have it. Put the lid on just so I don't spill it everywhere. So now what I'll do is gently pour that into there. Now sometimes you have to be careful doing this because you can actually fill the fork leg up and it'll overflow. As this is getting a bit close to the top, I'm just gonna stop there and then I'm gonna prime the damper cartridge. Might be able to hear it gurgling. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's definitely prime that, and the oil levels come down. So, carry on topping it up. And now it's time to put the rest of the bits back in the fork. So we'll start with the spring. Then we have a little spacer there, and we've got this spacer, and we've got that one. And then we've got the fork cap. So this bit can be a bit awkward, so once again, we'll get Bill to give us a hand. Cheers, Bill. That's right, Ian. Oh. Cheers, Bill. So. There we have it. The fork is rebuilt. It's nice and squashy, like it should be and it's returning jobs are good in. so the other thing I do need to do is replace the oil in the other fork but that's just a case of taking the cap off emptying the oil out topping it up with the new stuff so I won't bore you with that but yeah I'm happy that's done I need to put this back in the bike and then I need to make sure the top's done up tight make sure that bolt on the bottom's done up tight as well 
but yeah that's a fork done not the easiest one I've ever done I must admit but we got there in the end so, so a massive thank you to mad for bikes for sorting out the fork oil and a massive thanks to Tim at Suzuki for sorting out the genuine fork seal I'm really glad that's in there uh, and yeah and thank you guys for watching we really do appreciate it we love in your comments guys we've had comments from absolutely everywhere we've had a few messages on Facebook so thank you very much and if you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon I think it's there uh, you won't miss any of our uploads so until next time we'll see you later